I mean, uh, my, my name is Gerald Antoine. I'm originally uh, from the South, Jackson, Mississippi, and um, I've always been an animal lover. I mean, I've been watching, I mean, I'm probably a lot older than some of your listeners. Um, I was watching the Animal Channel when Mutual of Omaha used to have uh, two guys going out wrestling anacondas and catching alligators and jumping in the water and wrestling them to uh, to preserve them and take them to a um, a more controlled human environment to uh, for the for the to keep from having them being endangered. So I go way back in the in the mid seventies when that was a black and white um, show. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, my my dog journey has always started from, like I say, watching the TVs and uh, watching TV and watching the old Yeller from the Disney Channel. And and since I grew up in the South, from my first uh, first animal was a black lab. Um, people from the South, we like animals that hunt. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Labrador was an ideal dog that we grew up watching and having because of the mere fact that it, it loves the water. And, and Mississippi is known for Mississippi River, you know, man-made reservoirs and lakes. So I love, it, it was just, it was, I think what really caught my eye is that one, one time I threw a a, uh, a stick off the tree into the lake and my dog just jumped right in the lake and retrieved it without me teaching them how to retrieve. And a lot of dogs, since I know this now, um, they're not jumping in no damn water mm-hmm. without you going in there with them first to uh, to make them feel secure that it's okay. Right. Right. And so from that point, uh, I was hooked. Um, you, you go a little fast forward. Uh, my grandmother, who practically raised me and my twin brother, um, didn't... Um, didn't like dogs. Mm-hmm. You know, she always said that she had enough two-legged dogs walking around the house as it is. <laughs> so therefore, um, we could never have animals in the household or outside. And um, once I was able to be a grown man and graduate from a university and relocate to a to a state that loves animals, California. Um, then I started thinking real hard about getting one. However, of course, most young people who come out of college with student loans who move to a metropolitan city or a big city such as Oakland, Los Angeles, et cetera, your first place ain't going to be no house. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a studio, or they call it junior one bedrooms. Right. And to have a dog in that particular situation, um, it's almost you're doing a disservice for the animal. So once I got my first piece of property uh, 12 years ago, it was uh, a condo. Now, I did my research on animals. I was like, you know what? What dog would be good for an apartment-type setting when I own the unit, right? Mm-hmm. Which one is going to shed the less, shed less hair? which one is going to be active and which one is mystique and it has a certain aura that that is still today very interesting when he walks in the room and i chose doberman Mm -hmm. now the first you know when you're first new in this game and you're not the internet wasn't that strong as it is now because each year it gets stronger anyway when I first looked at Dobermans, I saw I went to a site. Of course, Kimbertall was the first Doberman breeder that pops up online. Um, I was going to get one, but I was I wasn't sure about buying puppies off of still pictures, mm-hmm. not videos, not webcams, but pictures. And I'm like, how do I know what I'm getting is what I see and how do I know that that dog is going to be what I want it to be when all the dogs on Kimbertall photo are pictures of these puppies laying down. Mm-hmm. I mean, all of them are in a down position. It was weird. And they all had tape over the ears, but you couldn't tell what kind of cropping. So I went and bought a local, I went, and went to a fountain guy here locally in Los Angeles. And uh, he had been doing breeding for some years, and I knew his—I knew of his brother, 
who's an NBA coach. Oh, okay. And I'll talk, you know, the name, the brother, must got good dogs. Mm-hmm. But that dog, uh, when I picked them out, first of all, I picked them out, I picked the puppy out at three or four weeks old. Bad mistake. Because people don't realize these animals change in color, they change in size, and their heads change. And that's why if you're going to go for the pick of the litter, you want to wait till like six weeks when you start seeing who's running shit, mm-hmm. who's the pack leader, who's the, who has the highest food drive, who is beating everybody up, who demands the ball, who demands a toy, who gets pissed off the quickest. I didn't do all those evaluations because, again, I didn't know. So I came back two weeks later to pick the puppy up. Puppy cost me 2500 bucks. I had the money. And he wouldn't let me go back there and get him. He brought the puppy to me. Mm. Now, to me, that's suspect. But I was so excited. My eyes are open wide shut that I took the pup. He had to have been the run of the litter. But he ended up being almost 32 inches tall. Wow. Yeah. That was the only beautiful thing about that dog is the way he looked. Mm-hmm. He had no... So I took the puppy to a guy who I've been recommended to to do some dog training named Lewis Williams of Black Mass. Uh, they used to train up here on Stockton La Brea, which is here in L.A., which is in a middle upper, upper middle class black neighborhood called Baldwin Hills. And I love the fact how Lewis had dogs on and off leash doing obedience and protection work and had serious ball drive. Mm-hmm. He was running these dogs with parachutes. You know, parachutes on their back while they running from one end of the field to the other. I was like, man, that is impressive. My dog wouldn't do that. He didn't have no ball drive. Didn't know how to evaluate. Mm-hmm. So after seven to eight thousand dollars in training, the dog was not what he what, the dog was not what I thought he was gonna be. Mm-hmm. Um, I sold him. When you have kids, you don't pick and choose what color tone, what hair texture, what color hair, how tall, how short, how small, how big they're going to be. You are dealt with with the cards that are given, correct? Right. When it comes to animals, you have the choice and the options to pick which animal you want, which cat, what type of cat, what color cat, et cetera. Right. Um, so when I saw that dog, I said, you know, I'm going to do something different because Lewis had a dog named Musa that was owned by a doctor named Dr. Bill Relaford. He had imported the dog from Russia. And I was like, how is this dog darker, bigger, crazy, insane drive? And he loved working. I mean, you, you could see it in his eyes. He didn't work because he had to. He worked because, man, I want to I wanna do this shit. Mm-hmm. Did my research. I said, oh, he's imported. So they was paying like $3,500. Hell, that's almost what Percy charged me. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and at least I know when I get a dog, the parents going to be champion versus the great, great grandparents champion. Because I, I, I don't go for that great, great grandparents or the grandparents are champion. I don't care about that because if you want to do history on me, my great, great grandfather was not a black man. Mm-hmm. I don't look like him. I want to know what the parents are doing. Right. I want to know what the parents are looking like, their temperaments, because usually the puppies, no, all the time the puppy's going to come out either like the mama or like the dad. You know, they're not going to come out looking like their great grandfather mm-hmm. because the gene pool gets diluted as the as you go closer to the uh, earlier generation of animals. Mm-hmm. So I imported a dog from Hungary named Alonzo. Best dog I ever had in my life. The smartest dog. He had everything I wanted. He was a dark chocolate lab looking dopey. And I, I was on to something. And I always said, I said, you know, if I get a dopey, he's going to contribute to this household because I paid child support for many years as a, as a father. Mm-hmm. I said, there's no way, there's no way, no how that I'm going to have an animal that eats as much as me, that poops more than me, <laughs> and they're not going to contribute to the household. Because if I want a pet, 
my first pet I'm going to get is either going to be a miniature schnauzer or a cocker spaniel. Mm-hmm. And this ain't going to be no pet. He's going to he's gonna be part of the family, mm-hmm. but he's going to contribute. And then one thing led to another, and then um, I end up getting a black and tan, which is Brody. And that's how it all started. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to get these dogs titled, health tested. I'm going to optimize them all the time like the Germans are always doing. They're always posting pictures of their male stud pictures etc cetera, etc cetera. and i said i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna advertise my dog and that's how i become one of the most um desired stud service provider in um in california and probably throughout the u.s mm-hmm. i ship out sperm from here all the way to new york to the bahamas to canada and because my dogs are proven every anybody can Anybody can pop a picture up of a dog, show his best size, his best features, and call him a stud dog. Mm-hmm. But how is that dog proven? Is he skittish? Can he take pressure? You know, can, uh, does he like the water? Is he distracted? Can he focus? Will he, will he fight or flight? Mm-hmm. So, these are the things that why people can try to do and, and imitate and duplicate, try to duplicate, uh, duplicate what I do. But you know, to do what I do it has to be a passion. It can't be just another job. Mm-hmm. You have to be. You have to want to do this, and and that's why every male dog that stays on my account, they got to get health tested and titled. Mm-hmm. Period. So that's how that's going, and I'm in a, I'm in the process right now. I'm, I'm, you got to handle yourself. Um, I'm in the process right now of uh, I've already imported. Uh, well, I'm, well, I got two males right now. One is the grandson of Alonzo, and he's also the son of my black dog Brody, and the other one, Dylan, is the son of Brody. And his mother's an import, mm-hmm. but I also, but I got some more cooking. I got Sigmund, who is um, who's currently in training right now, and he is in um, he's been training for his first title, his BH, which is in in Shitson, but now they call it IGP versus IPO. Mm-hmm. Um, he's um, now then I'm going to import another dog from Russia. Um, I called him Casanova but his legal name is Prestige. And I got another one from France. I'm going to do ring sport. Um, his name is uh, uh, Romeo, and he's only four weeks old. So I'm, 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 I'm taking this to a whole new level, man. Right. Because this, 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 this really, I'll be honest with you, my ex-wife told me this a long time ago. She said, these dogs define me. And you know what? I'll take that title. Mm-hmm. I'll take, I take that because I know my dogs won't leave me. But humans will. Right. So I'll take it. I'll take it. Yep. Oh, yeah. So initially, when I started doing t- the, the sport work, I was training with Lewis Williams of Black Mass, and his style of training was geared towards more ring sport. Mm-hmm. So that's why, if you notice all my videos, I'm always talking to him in French because that's what I was trained. That's how I was initially trained. Mm-hmm. And um, so... Alonzo was already doing, was training doing, we was already training Alonzo to do leg work and bite work, uh, leg bite work, and he was hitting the upper pockets. And then uh, I backed off for a while because I was getting married at the time. And this is when Alonzo was like a year and a half here. This is like 10 years ago. I was getting married and I had to make a decision during the recession to keep paying for the, to do some training with Lewis or. Make sure that my, uh, my my wife at that time would have a nice wedding. Mm-hmm. So I made an executive decision on that. But then, when everything tapered off, the wife left. Um, I got back into it. But before I did that, I started tuning Alonzo's obedience up. So I got him a CGC, which is an AKC obedience title. I got him a CGCA, which is an advanced advanced obedience title. 
Um, I got them a CSAU, which is obedience title for ring sport. And we got a, then I did the IPO uh, title on where it was an IPO. It was, a, it's called a six and eight. So it was everything but the tracking. Mm-hmm. And I did that with Wolfgang Radar, which is a, he's a, Wolfgang's a German dog trainer here in LA. Didn't know that, <clears throat> what's funny about that, I didn't know that there's a, there's a, uh, a written test you have to take when you, before you can compete. You have to take a written title, a written test. Oh. I felt that written test. Yeah, it's a written test involved. People don't realize that. No. Yeah, and uh, if you don't pass that written test, you can't, you can't compete on the field. Mm-hmm. So I failed that written test, and then I came back and had to take the test. And if you fail that test during competition day, you can't compete that day. Mm-hmm. You got to come another day. So I passed it the second time around. <clears throat> I did the OB, I did the BH on him as well, and I was pretty shocked because he got sick the night before eating, and it was he had thrown up the night before. Oh. And so, Alonzo got all those titles. Then I started working with Brody. Now with Brody, I started tracking with him at a later age. And if you want to, if you ever want to do shits, and they call it IGP now, if you ever want to do shits, and you want to do a full complete title. You better start tracking your dog when he's like three, four months old. Because mm-hmm. when you start tracking your dog when he's 10 months, 11 months, 12 months, he's going to go through some metabolic changes because you have to starve him. Mm-hmm. So you have to starve him because he, he has to learn how to work for his food. Mm-hmm. When you're training puppies to teach him how to track his puppies, you don't have to because they love treats all day long. And it makes it easier where they don't have to get a, they don't have to be forced to track. So I let Al Benuelos, a prestige canine, um, do the complete training and the handling because I just didn't have the time. Mm-hmm. So he put a, he put a BH on Brody. He put a IPO one and an IPO two. We went for the IPO three, man, like three times, man. And it's either he would blow the tracking, but he would do well in obedience or protection, or he'll blow the protection by blowing some blinds, but he'd do well on everything else. So we just could never get that three. But, you know, listen, a lot, lot, lot of Dobies don't even get IPO too, so I, I was cool with that. Right. This, this is a German Shepherd sport. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, so now I'm doing... Uh, I got Sigmund. I imported him from St. Petersburg, Russia, from a kennel called St. Krill. And he's getting dialed in right now. He's 16 months old. You can't compete your dog until he's 16 months anyway. Mm-hmm. This is not like PSA if he's 12 months old. He, he's doing the work and getting a PDC. And, you know, no, this is, that's why it sits in the van. It's a whole different dog sport, man. It, a lot of compulsion, a lot of control. I'm not saying the other sports ain't crap. But I'm not a big fan of, of ring sport when it comes to ring one, ring two, and ring three because Dobies are bigger than Malinois, right? They're mm-hmm. bigger than Malinois. Mm-hmm. And you got to, your dog has to actually jump over a six foot wall mm-hmm. and, and land properly. And shits, and then all you got to do is go over an A frame wall, which is at an angle, mm-hmm. and bring a dumbbell back. So. It's a whole different game. And I love the sport because it, you, when you do a sport like this, like the Germans do, see, in Germans, see, you, you, didn't, you may or may not know this, but in Germany, uh, breeders came from breeding unless, unless their dogs have some kind of titles, whether it's obedience or confirmation. So you'll notice that even they be getting puppy titles on their dog, it's still a title because they're not allowed. To, FCI won't allow you to breed them if the dog has nothing. Right. Here in America, AKC will let you breed a dog and a rabbit, you know, so it, you know, it, it's about the money. Right. But over there, you got it. Your dog got to have something under his pedigree for him to even be considered breedable. And could you talk about um, the differences between the American lines and the European lines? Oh, hell yeah. Now, 
So like I said, I'm a little bit. Um, I was born in '71, not '91. So a lot of a lot of kids are seeing reruns or seeing on YouTube called the Doberman Gang. Mm-hmm. The American Lions, they were much more aggressive back then, and the mm-hmm. European Lions were more of a show line. But they they lacked the bone density, mm-hmm. the bone thickness. Um, they looked like deers. Mm-hmm. You know, they had small heads and. Having multicolored dogs like blues and whites and fines were were normal. That's not normal in the, in, in in the UK mm-hmm. or the EU or in Germany. It's not normal. So when I told you when I saw Musa, I saw how bigger and darker his his head was, much wider, and the veracity of his workability was just insane. You know, American Dobies. Um, they're like Malinois, you know, they, 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 they can do like superficial flesh wounds, right? Mm-hmm. But the, Europe, the European dobies, if their head's big enough, they can cut through those three, four, five, six layers of skin and get down to the white meat, mm-hmm. you know, because they have, more, they have more PSI on their bite pressure. You know, so there's a hell of a difference. You get the thickness of the neck, the head, the markings. Um, you know, in Germany, they don't, they don't, they don't remove the dew claws because it's, it's, it's good for grabbing when they're doing protection work. Mm-hmm. Um, the drive now is much higher most of the time, but it's a hell of a different, not only like externally, but genetically wise, because the American Dobies now are, are bred to be more of a house pet versus a working dog. And remember this, the German, uh, the, the Doberman was initially created by Lewis Doberman, who wanted a protect, personal protection dog. Mm-hmm. And uh, the people now just like, it's almost like somebody buying a Corvette, but you only drive it on the streets. Mm-hmm. You got to open that son of a bitch up sometimes. Right. You got to go on the highway, man. Open it up. You know, it's almost like a plane. If, if a plane stays grounded all the time, he stands a chance of having more mechanical issues than flying. You gotta, you gotta exercise it. Mm-hmm. You gotta get worked. And um, that's what anything man-made or mechanical, you know, um, it's got to be used if it's gonna, if it's gonna function properly. And people get these dogs and they just walk them. Oh, I jog my, I jog with my Dobie. He gets plenty of exercise. So listen, he's got four legs and you got two. <laughs> You're going to be the one that's getting worked out. Yeah. He's walking. Dobies don't run, They don't walk anywhere. They run everywhere. So you better get on a bicycle and put that bike leash on him where it sticks out five feet from the bike mm-hmm. and take his ass on a 10 to 15 mile bike ride if you want to work your dog. But, yeah, man, that's a huge difference. And that's why I would never, ever, ever, like when I do breedings, and people want to ask me for they want to instead of giving me my stud fee, they want to do a pick of the litter. So let me see the pedigree. Mm-hmm. I start seeing these Alex Rodriguez kennels and and um, Trey Bear kennels. That's the hope shit. American Life, not doing it. No, cancel that. Give me my money. Mm-hmm. I don't want nothing. And then I start seeing the WZs in front of the AKC number. That means they got that they got the Z factor that they. They can put out those those whites and those blues, man. And those those dogs with those off colors, a lot of them have photosynthesis issues where they're sensitive to light. Right. And a lot of times they, they have um, they have skin problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's my thing on it. Can you talk about um, the why it's important to health test uh, the Dobermans? Absolutely. So that's one of the things that is imperative for me to to have done. I said in the beginning of my conversation that um, to get them completely health tested and tight. Mm-hmm. Well, Dobies, like other breeds, have genetic issues inherently. And it's up to responsible stud service providers and or breeders to try to do all the genetic tests, whether the dog have the traits or not. That way you give the people options to say, okay, I will breed to him to a female that is not a carrier of that genetic mutated um, gene. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So for me, I get the basics, you know, which is the Von Willer brand, the DCM-1, I think it's called Diluted Cardiomyopathy. And they have another one that came out three years ago, which is DCM-2, which they, they dive into, they dive more deeply into the, um, um, the genetic makeup to see if they still carry the small gene pool. And then I do DM, which is called degenerative myopathy. I think is what it's called. And then I, I do the thyroids and OFA, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Because when people want to see, see, OFA is a perfect website because now you can't put this dog with that dog. Like, you can't take a sample from this dog and put a and say it was the other dog sample. It's like the chain of custody is unbreakable because your DNA is on the profile. Right. It's already linked in. And then I get the hips and elbows certified. And I can get the hips and elbows check ways a year, a year and a half. But I don't even get the hips and elbows certified until they turn two years old because OFA don't certify hips and elbows until a dog is actually 24 months older. Right. So I can get the hips done when they turn a year old, and then the hips are end up being bad two a year later. Uh, what's the point? So I wait until they, they, you know, the hips are developed, and take them in to a, a vet that's OFA certified and get it done. And that way, you know, when one dog has is a VWD carrier, then the guy who wants to breed to one of my dogs would say, okay, I can't breed my, my, my bitch who's a carrier to your dog, but I have a, a female clear mm-hmm. to breed to your dog. That way you give them the option. The goal is always to wash out any of those genetic mutations, but it's been in these dogs for years. And usually, man, Dobies don't die from this stuff if they have just one copy of DCM1 or one copy of DCM2. Dogs usually are dying from hit by a car, poisoned, but they don't die from the other stuff. I haven't heard of too many dogs die from VWD. That's the, first of all, you, you carrier. if you're a VWD carrier, it doesn't develop into a affected. Mm-hmm. If you have a VWD affected dog, it doesn't digress to carrier. It's just like uh, diabetes. It doesn't progress to a different stage. It, it, you know, whatever you're born with, it stays at that level, and you have to you have to deal with it. Yeah. Can you talk a little little bit more about some of the health issues that the the modern Dobermans have, and maybe like the difference in health between the European lines and the American lines? Well, good question. Now, the American lines years ago, a lot of Dobies were dying from von Willer brands, mm-hmm. um, which is I think is. Uh, has, has to do with the heart, and because I said, you know, I said in the, I said in one of my statements, I said Dobies they they run everywhere, they never walk. And when you have a dog that's very active and do a lot of running, he's going to work his heart a lot. He's going to get the blood flowing. So you know, a lot of people really wasn't in in tune with the genetic testing for what the Dobies were dying from. And the Europeans knew about this well long before we did. So what they started doing in recent years, and I'm talking about seven to eight years, they started doing a um, significant amount of head tests because most of their clients are Americans. Mm-hmm. We, buy, we buy most of their dogs. And so that's been one of the things that's been our sticking point. What kind of health tests? Mm-hmm. A lot of people who buy dogs from overseas, they ask for just a couple of health tests. But there's a plethora of health tests that should be done. But the, the Germans, they get pissed off when you ask about it. And when they don't post a health test on their site for a certain dog, that means that dog has that certain issue. When they when they don't have the uh, when they don't have that genetic issue, they post they post the results. Right. So you, you got to be careful, man. That's why when you buy a dog from overseas, you better go buy for referral of somebody who had a great experience. Right. Because I've seen shit where people import dogs and the people never sent over the FCI paperwork. And if you don't have the FCI paperwork, your dog ain't going to never be registered in AKC. Right. 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 
And do you have to have a registration to compete in uh, the bite sports? Um, that's a good question. Now, like with Brody and Alonzo, they are they competed in sports. Okay, so first of all, the the only sport that is AKC that I've done that's AKC acknowledges and puts on the pedigree was the CGC and the CGCA that Alonzo did. Mm-hmm. Now, AKC is affiliated with the Doberman Club of America. It's called it's a DCI, Doberman Club, and, and uh, IDC. I don't remember the actual acronym of it, but, right. but you have to compete within their structure um, competitions for them to put that title mm-hmm. on your pedigree. My titles, even though there's clubs throughout the U.S., they let any dog compete in their clubs. Of course, you got to get your dog wanded to make sure he has a chip and he's registered. Right. And they have this wand to go out to to make sure that's the same dog that's on your paperwork. But my dog's titles are not recognized through AKC. Now, does that mean my dog is not proven? Of course not, because... My dog is, is in an international or a regional club that is recognized throughout the U.S., mm-hmm. but they let all breeds compete, cool. you know. Mm-hmm. But but as far as AKC, a lot of the, unless you're doing a Doberman Club, it's called the United, the United Doberman Club, the UDC. Okay. Yeah, unless you're going to compete in the UDC, then they're not going to be, they're not going to uh, recognize your title. But you know what? I don't give a shit about that because everything about the sport, if you're with a good trainer or a good club, it's going to be YouTube, Instagram, mm-hmm. documented with several people, and you just you got to go with it. And I'm a part of the Shipping Club of America. Mm-hmm. So. They compete throughout the United States. They have different clubs in every region. And could you talk about the the standard that you're looking for on in, in your kennel? What is the the ideal like height and weight and structure and all that? Wow, but you got some good ass questions, man. <laughs> um, you're a dog guy, so for me, and it's just for me. Intangibly wise, I'm looking for the asshole in the litter. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for the one that is curious about noise, distractions, that growl, growls at at the other pups and people, who's brave, who likes to eat all the food and take food from other litter mates. I'm looking for that. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the tangible aspects, I'm looking for markings. I like darker dobies. That's a genetic trait. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for head size. Uh, the hips. I, will, I like wide hips on a puppy. Um, I just, I, I, I like the boxy muzzle. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's got you know. It's, uh, of course, when the puppies are young, their eyes are not as dark as they're going to be as they get older. But the darker the eyes are, the better because dark almond eyes is is preferred. But yeah, markings, colors, hip size, head, and muzzle is the external part. And I like Adobe at its peak. The maturity level to me is at two years old when they got through growing for Europeans. Mm-hmm. I like them to be no more than 29 and a half inches, 30 max mm-hmm. tall to the wither, and to weigh no more than 92 pounds. Max. Mm-hmm. Max. I want to see the last two ribs. If I stack them, I don't want to see his back arched. I like to see a straight back. Mm-hmm. So, but, and that's another thing, man. I've gone for tangents here, but got a lot of these clowns out here talking about I feed my dog twice a day. Dude, for a grown dog, you feed them one big meal at the end of the day. These mm-hmm. are not puppies. They're not growing anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, um, 
Hey, people like, man, I got a 120 pound Dobie. I said, man, your dog's fat then. <laughs> right. Because, because, I said, I call them Coke cans. You know, they shake like a Coke can. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I said, your dog's fat. I can't see the last two ribs. He, he can, he can walk, run for like two minutes and all tired and shit. I said, bro, get out of my face. This, this, this dog ain't healthy. <laughs> right. You know, I got a 115 pound dog. I said, your dog's fat. I got an open bowl policy. That means he's eating all day long. He's quarantined every day. <laughs> so, yeah, man. I mean, this, I'm a novice at this. Of course, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say that with this breed, I know more than the average person. With this breed. Mm -hmm. And I'm always steady trying to improve the breed. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. and yeah. can, can you talk about when you're competing in sport what how does the German Shepherd and the Malinois what is the difference between the Doberman and them what what do they add to the sport well you have these questions written <laughs> okay so that's a good question because <clears throat> The Sitzen sport is a German Shepherd sport. That's, the Germans came up with that sport. Mm -hmm. Right? And when you see a plethora of German Shepherds, Malinois, even some Rottweilers, maybe. Not, not too many Rottweilers, but when you get the German Shepherds, um, the Black Shepherds, the Sables, the Duchess, the, the Malawas, nobody's giving a shit when they watch them because you know what? That's expected. Yeah. They were they were born to do that. Right. I mean, I, I can eat popcorn and look somewhere else while the dogs are doing their obedience. This is one of those breeds. And I'm not knocking any of them. Right. I love all animals. But it's a given. It's almost like a guy who is seven feet tall in high school yeah, it's a great possibility that he ain't gonna have to pay for college. Yeah, and he probably gonna play pro somewhere overseas, if not here in the United States. Right. But he's like, unless something, unless something happens to him where he breaks both his ankles walking, he ain't gonna play. Mm -hmm. Yep. But when Adobe step out there, man, dude, people stop and watch because that's not their sport. Mm-hmm. And that's the beauty, man. When Brody used to go out to that field, man, because he's he has that deep ass Great Dane bark, and he was powerful. And I mean, when I mean powerful, bro, when he bites, it's like he's trying to eat it. A lot of dogs they they've been trained to do this protection sport so long they don't bite as hard as they're supposed to, right? They just bite because the boss tell them to bite. Right. This dude, like this, when the decoy was doing the courage test, mm -hmm. Dobies go one speed, right? The decoy better make sure that he catch him right because even the decoy is a little bit scared. Did you see this black dot mm -hmm. coming full speed, low to the ground, and you can't gauge it that quick. You better make sure you catch him or you'll jam his ass. <laughs> because Brody got jammed, and I had to put him on steroids to fix his vertebrae, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So... It's, it's beautiful, man, when you see him. And it's even more beautiful when it's your dog. Mm -hmm. And I've made, I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on training. And my dogs have made me that money back up and have produced some phenomenal offspring. If you notice on my Instagram, Europe, European underscore Doberman underscore stud, I don't put up nobody dogs unless they're offsprings of my dogs. Mm-hmm. You can't give me your dog you got from Tribertal and I'm going to post a picture. I'm not doing that. Because <laughs> I don't know what your dog's made of. Mm -hmm. My dogs have given me way more than my classic Buick Grand National Regals. They've given me so much intangibly. You know, like when I was going through depression, 
Alonzo was there. Mm-hmm. He can't bark the word depression, but he but he, he he was there for me, man. Right. So screw people who have a problem with people with dogs. You know, because it's like when I used to walk uh, Brody and Alonzo in my gated community, people go to the other side of the street. They part like the Red Sea, man. I'm like, wait a minute. I said, hey, 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 people. My dog is not the one breaking in your neighborhoods, raping your daughters, killing people, having road rage, mm-hmm. burglarizing your home. It's people mm-hmm. that's doing that. This dog right here will die for you. Yep. How many humans can you say will do the same thing for you? Mm-hmm. I don't listen I have a twin brother and I highly doubt that he would take a bullet from me because he got kids right they come before me now mm-hmm. this ain't no me and him dressed up like twins no more it's him dressing his own kids up right so I mean it's a different game man I mean you're gonna have haters out there I've been I've had haters talk shit about me I hate, and then if you ain't buying their puppies, they're going to talk shit about you. That's cost of doing business. You got a lot of gigabyte gangsters out there yeah. who talk shit to you. You know, I got a guy who, who went racial on me. I'm like, wait a minute. This is dogs we're talking about. You go racial on me about dogs? Right. I said, I said, bro, if you was in my face here in L.A., <laughs> um, I guarantee you wouldn't come up to me and you talking that crap about what I do with my dog. No, no, not at all. That's the thing, man. It's all about training. That's what that's what uh, obedience training is about. Is introducing your dog to people the proper way. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, they're animals, mm-hmm. and expect the unexpected. Their liabilities, not a their liabilities, not their luxury, mm-hmm. not a requirement to have. So I try to make sure I introduce my animals appropriately. Now, depending on which animal it is, he won't meet strangers. Mm-hmm. But I don't have any crazy loco screw loose dogs, period. You know, that will do something like that. But see, when people jump too soon or move too fast or some dogs get spooked and they either fight or flight. Mm-hmm. And I never take my dogs to no beach or dog parks because they see a lot of crazy dogs with no training and they think it's okay to act that way and they, they go all your obedience train out the window. Right. People who have females, whether they imported or that they bought from a local breeder and they try to get a, a second family member, but they love the dog that they have, they want something identical. They mm. think the dog's going to be identical. And some people who want to supplement their income. Right. You know, um, you, you get all sorts of people. I mean, you got people who want to breed so all their other family members can have puppies off of them as pets. Mm-hmm. So it's a barrage of type of people. Right. Most definitely. If uh, here's a question that I like to ask everybody, just to, it's just a conversational thing, and I like to understand people's um, all around mindset. Sure. If it wasn't the European Dobermans, uh, what other two other dogs would you be interested in? Great Dane or a Black Giant Schnauzer. Well, and why would you why would you say Great Dane? I love big dogs. Yeah, but they're short haired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It can move the crowd, intimidation. And it's, 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 it's always beautiful to see a person with a, or a female, with a big, vicious-looking dog, but he's completely under control. Mm-hmm. I love that. That means that there's complete trust. And what is it about the giant schnauzer that you like? They're, they're different. A lot of people don't have them, but they're bred to do some protection work, and they, they, they work for it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. 